With its unique freeform modular system, the new Mastercase Maker 5 from Cooler Master allows unparalleled flexibility with its adjustable internal layout and exterior customization options. Learn more about how you can start customizing your own case by following the link down in the description. All right, so we're gonna do something here that I've never really even attempted on this channel. I am going to take $400 of my own money, head down to Micro Center and see, can we build a PC that you can game on for under $400 brand new? But before we go there, there's one really important crucial stop we have to make. Hi, can I get a Vente upside down ice caramel macchiato with whipped cream? Yeah, Vente ice upside down caramel macchiato. We're gonna add a whip to that, anything else? Uh, yeah, just a second. What do you want? Uh, let me get one of those as well. Make that two of those. So we got an open box carbide spec 01 case from Corsair. This was like 29 bucks. Oh, that's yours right there. Oh. He was getting stuff for his console. Power supply here, we got a 500 watt EVGA power supply. 80 plus, not even bronze, but just 80 plus. It's so cute. An AMD Athlon 5350 two gigahertz quad core CPU. The idea here is that gaming shouldn't take whole lot of gaming or CPU we'll, we'll see we got eight gigabytes of ballistics 1866 no 1600 1600 but it's a two times four gigabyte I got the eight gigs instead of four I thought if I went with four we could save some money but the four gigabyte kit was like four dollars less so I was like for four extra bucks it makes sense just to future proof a little bit yeah I said future proof deal with it a little bit on the memory a Toshiba one terabyte 7200 rpm 64 megabyte cache Again, this was like 39 bucks, brand new hard drive. Uh, but the motherboard here was an AM1 S2H, literally like super bare bones. There is nothing special about this. It's a, mic or a MATX, so it's a micro ATX board. Can't overclock or do anything with this, but it doesn't matter. We had an extra case fan because the carbide only has one intake fan, so we want an exhaust in there. And then for the graphics card, we picked up a R9 380X, XFX. But proving that I'm putting my money where my mouth is, I own this graphics card already. I have one in the shop, but I bought another one because, you know, when, when you're putting your own money on the line on this, you, you force yourself to think a little bit differently. With tax and everything, $374.10. So when I, when I had initially put all this together, it actually came to 390, but there was a sale today because it's Labor Day. You kind of take your chances when you buy an open box case from Micro Center. I think we did all right. It's got a window so we can show off all of our mustard and ketchup cables. <laughs> I mean, for a $29 case, it's all black inside. That's cool. So yeah, I think it's a good starting point for our ultra budget build. So first things first though, we got to do a test boot. We got to make sure everything works. So, okay, so this is the 380X we bought. And just to prove I'm putting my money where my mouth is, right? Here's what we just bought. Here's the one I already owned. It's actually been chilling in this EVGA 750 Ti box, but you can see we hand wrote 380X on there. That is insane. Look at that fan, it's like a 40 millimeter fan. That's crazy. One thing I want to point out though real quick is I do have my Sennheiser shotgun mic on the camera. Listen how quiet this is. I am impressed. That's cool. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> Neither can the internet. So it's really not that bad, honestly. I mean, you guys know me and cable management. I, I did the best I could, considering what it is. That fan though, that's so, that's so cute. 
And at 375 bucks, we even have room for growth with a 500 watt power supply, one terabyte hard drive, eight gigs of RAM, and a rear fan. This graphics card will last us a while, so the question is, was the Athlon the right choice? Well, there's no upgrade path there anyway. But, like I said, it was 40 bucks for the chip and the motherboard. So if you really want to upgrade this thing, graphics card will last you a little while. You can get a new chip and motherboard. Now it's time to load an OS and see if you can even play games on this. Don't see why you couldn't. Okay, so obviously, wow, CPU's only running at 30C. That is a really cold chip. All right, so I know some people are gonna be like, what the heck, you need to account the cost of an operating system. I personally don't because that's software. And the question here was for 375 bucks in hardware, what do you get? And with that mentality too though, any game we're gonna benchmark, you'd then have to be like, you have to factor in the price of CSGO, and you have to factor in the price of Far Cry 4 or whatever we're gonna do. So that's why we're not like including the price of the operating system in there. So anyway, we're gonna get OS installed and we're gonna play around and see I uh, just wasted money, which I kind of did, I guess. I don't need this thing, but I, I thought, why the hell not? So. For science. For science. That, that beep was courtesy of YouTube's new policies regarding monetization. Counter-Strike Go, all settings on high, and two, S -M -M -S two times MSAA. So let's see if you could actually play with these settings and, then, and have a good time. And no making fun of my terrible gameplay, by the way. But look, at, look at the FPS. I mean, you guys see that up in the corner. This is online with bots, so... But, I, I mean, look at this. Now, you, now you're more of a competitive Counter-Strike player than I am. Would you be able to play with this FPS? Yeah. Absolutely. What, what we're caring about here is if it goes below 60, right? Yeah. I mean, every, every now and then it feels like there might be just like a, ever, ever such a slight stutter. But then again, we are playing on pretty close to a potato CPU here. Damn, I could have swore I killed him multiple times. I mean, this CPU is pretty close to potato. potato yeah. <laughs> I mean, 39 bucks for monitor or for motherboard and oh shit, and CPU. You could be balling on a budget for CS:GO. That's like the money you save building this to play CS:GO. That's an Asimov op. Now I know that a lot of folks are gonna be like, but that's CSGO, CSGO's not very demanding. You know how many people get mad that I don't benchmark CSGO in my lineup? <laughs> CSGO okay. is one of the most popular PC games of all time though. And it, it is the most popular shooter on PC platform. I mean, the only thing that gets more comp or, or more popular than that is MOBAs, like StarCraft II and League and Dota, stuff like that. I don't think anyone's impressed by the fact that we can run Counter-Strike Go, but what about a newer title like Doom? We've got Doom here running, 1080p, vertical sync is off, we're running SMAA and uh, anti-aliasing on there, motion blur is on high, we've got the Vulcan API going and overall quality on ultra. I, I would not have expected ultra performance out of a $375 tower including tax. But with that said, here are the FPS right here in the top right corner as you can see. I really, really wish you guys could see how freakishly smooth this is. What, all right, Nick, what do you think? It's awesome, and I'm blown away that we're running this off of the build. Because I was expecting like really sluggish speeds. I kind of was too, I'll be honest. I mean, yeah, we're not choosing the hardest games to run. Like, this isn't going to run Crisis 3. This isn't going to run Far Cry 4 at anything like super high end. But the, I think the point of this build is if you're on a very limited budget and you want to get into PC gaming, there, there's an entry point. And I think that something like this is actually doing it. I mean, a $39 processor with a free motherboard. Okay, a, a penny, it cost a penny, but still, I had to pay a penny. It was free because I bought the processor and it was $40 off the motherboard. The motherboard cost $39, so we had to pay a penny for it. Am I getting demonetized because of this violence? Ooh, new gun. So this is a pretty demon heavy area with lots of explosions and things. Lots of things happening on the screen. You gotta hit the... I know, but I kinda wanna kill these guys before I bring out 500 more at me. All right, ready?
All right, so what if I drop the settings down to say, like, leave it at both. I'm just gonna say medium for the hell of it. Just curious. We came up quite a bit. We came up nearly double, right? With that explosion, it went down to the 40s before, but we're still sitting pretty healthy FPS here. Conclusion time. Is this a computer that would allow you to play any game you want? at playable you know, FPS. No, it's not. And that's because it's obviously bound by the CPU. The CPU is definitely the limiting factor here. I mean, we were able to bottleneck a 380X without any problems with an Athlon. In games like Dirt Rally, Dirt Rally was pretty CPU bound. Um, we tried to play Dirt, or at least Co Coconut Monkey or Nick tried to play Dirt, and uh, it was in the 30s, 20s, not great. Again, a title that when we went back and looked at CPU utilization was pegged and we also tried playing Overwatch, once again, was pegged. But on the flip side though, if you look at something like Doom, modern AAA title with Vulcan, we were able to see 60 FPS no problems on Ultra, and if we dropped it down to medium or high, we were able to see up to 90 FPS with this system right here. You also were able to maintain about 60 FPS in CSGO, which as you guys know, is an older engine, right? The, the source engine is not very demanding, but we got some very good playable experiences there. So you gotta ask yourself what games you wanna play. If you don't wanna spend a lot of money, you can build for around $400 a gaming system that'll let you play games like League of Legends, Dota, maybe some StarCraft, some CSGO, and even Doom without any problems. But it really is gonna depend on the title. There are some changes you could make to this system though that would get you a better experience if you can bump your budget up to about 500 bucks. You could get yourself something like an A10 APU or even something like an 8320 uh, SE or, or some sort of a lower end AMD multi-core CPU that's on a modern socket like AM3 Plus or whatever and maybe even advertises or allows a little bit of overclocking which we couldn't do with this system here. We can reuse the graphics card, the power supply, the RAM, the hard drive, uh, but again, the upgrade path here on, on AM1 obviously has got nowhere to go. But for 40 bucks, it was a good starting point. And in the future, if you set aside another hundred-ish dollars, maybe about $129, you could get a new CPU, new motherboard that would give you a huge boost to gaming performance. Anyway, guys, there you go. You tell me whether or not you think this was a waste of money. If you have no gaming computer whatsoever, at least this guy will let you play some games, which was kind of the point here. Obviously, it's not gonna be super high-end gaming experience, but it's gaming nonetheless. Thanks for watching guys. As always, we'll see you in the next video.